Hi everyone, so today's video I'm really going to talk about plecos and actually the fossils that we have um, already. Um, plecos and by their scientific name um, or family name, Lorcardae, are popular aquarium fishes of almost a unique appearance. It's easy though to think these fishes are primitive and ancient. The dermal plating that um, really builds that structure, the dontos with their... Um, the spines on the pectoral fins, on the body. Um, <laughs> their whole body form aids in this opinion that they might be primitive or ancient. But with scientific research, we have identified this current 1,026 extant species strong family to originate actually from the Oligocene um, to the early Miocene, which is only 20 to 30, 000, uh, 20 to 30 million years ago. In comparison, the dinosaurs were wiped out 66 million years ago. This sounds like a long time ago, but the Miocene was when a lot of mammal groups, which the mammal, um, lower cars obviously fish, um, but a lot of mammal groups started appearing, such as um, hyena and mustelids, mustelids being weasels and ferrets. And the Oligocene had a lot of the larger mammals, um, and other mammal groups occurring, such as the baleen whales and the toothed whales, had just uh, evolved. During this period, North and South America would have still been divided, and this would have prevented a lot of mixing of fauna and flora, so animals and plants, between the two continents. I thought I should quickly say that um, you can see uh, between the Oligocene and the Miocene that bridge between um, North and South America is starting to appear. So as you go through these time periods, you're going to get increased um, colonization and mixing between the different taxa, mixing as in um, or oh, colonization between both of their both sides. Um, but still, it, they are separate, um, at least as far as I know. Um, and that this will allow for a slightly increasing influence from both continents on each other um, over time. So this will have definitely um, influenced the evolution of Lorcardae. And that might be why we see uh, Lorcardae, I guess, in South America, but not so much in North America. Um, for freshwater to fish, I, there is probably even more of a barrier. The whole um, continent structure obviously has influenced the evolution of Laurel Cardae um, as South America was divided into different shields and um, sort of some areas were, are proposed to be um, sort of, uh, what's it, more flooded than others with um, even salt water, which is an extreme barrier for freshwater fishes. So fossils only offer a small window into the past. Not all species will be preserved. And this means that not all of that evolutionary process can be visible. And obviously this creates many gaps in the fossil records, particularly in areas of the world where the climate or the environment didn't allow for um, sort of more accurate, reliable sort of fossilization, which means that obviously with many taxa there might not be that um, sort of fossil record to build a better picture on opposed to some areas of the world where there is. For this reason we have very few fossils of laurel carids I believe. Along with that um, there'll be many fossils within collections that have not been identified to family, genus or species level. They might be too fragmented, they might be too damaged, they might be have been placed in somewhere that might not be easily like identifiable. Fossils within private collections won't be as easily available for the scientific research in the first place. So that causes a lot of issues um, with private buyers if they're buying a legitimate fossil in the first place. Um, then we have legislation and regulations um, of different countries preventing or um, affecting how scientists can study specific specimens, whether it's um, transporting the specimens out, visiting the specimens, collecting the specimens or loaning them. Um, only certain ones of these will apply to Laurel Carids, obviously. 
the final aspect is how many fossils will have been lost um they might have been damaged in quarries and mining. Um, South America is a massive area for mining. Although, depending what you're mining, you probably it might not be the best place for fossil formations. Um, and then there's also the issue that fossils do actually decay. So, with oxygen exposure, they can start to fall apart. And I believe that it might depend on how the fossil formed. I don't know. But they do, um, they can decay. And therefore need specialist attention specialist. Um, well, someone that's extremely um, what's it, experienced and knowledgeable in conserving fossils. And therefore maybe also affect, this means that, but like storing the fossils, they have to be stored in the correct environment, which can be difficult for many uh, scientific institutions that um, is expensive. So far, we have probably only a few fossil specimens of laurel cards, but in general, most of the fossil record, there will always be gaps and some taxa will have more available than others. Like the amount of, if you live in the UK and you go down to the south, the amount of ammonites you can find and trilobites, I think there's a lot in like Morocco. Um, it just happens to be what's the best time and place for preservation almost. Um, like uh, China is well known for fossil birds. Well, the evolution of birds. Um, anyway, so probably, well, the most no well known fossil I would say is the Canthicus uh, species from the late Miocene, and this was um, described, identified by Bogan and Angolin. Angolin, oh, my pronunciation is awful. And this was uh, um extracted from the para piranha oh my pronunciations are dreadful um and this uh, species was identified from the top of the skull and the only issue is that this fossil didn't contain many more osteological details so it cannot be identified or described to a species level which you'll see quite often with fossils that they might be fragmented and there's many species of dinosaurs particularly that are described on the single bone so for taxonomy this does provide maybe a few more issues than um answers or it answers some questions but creates more questions and that's what science is about just finding questions to answer um so the next fossil which i think is the earliest that i could find and sometimes it's really difficult when finding journals you get the same few like listed in the different um on the different websites that platform it but this is in the subfamily Rhinolepine, which contains the striking pseudo Rhinolepis, uh, which is LO95. So this would be whether you can't say it's an ancestor with fossils because it could have just been um, a cousin or something that diverged earlier or even maybe diverged later, but went extinct it's really difficult so that's why it's really difficult to use words like basal and stuff because it's if it's extinct you can probably oh it's really difficult but a lot of wording has to be very precise um but so this fossil was described as a uh, teo betia pariba um by Amala Barber and Lundberg in 2007. Um, as you notice, I don't think that genus actually has any extant species. So there is no, as far as I can see, extant species of um, the genus uh, Talbatia. Talbatia probably sounds better. Um, uh, and then it was actually, originally, I don't think it was actually placed in the subfamily. And Rhine Lepine is quite similar to Hypostomine. Whether they're sort of sister tax or not seems to depend on the actual phylogenetics. But it was actually placed in uh, Rhine Lepine in 2000, uh, 2021 by Armbuster and um, Lujan. 
This fossil shows a more complete condition um, of that sort of, what's it, uh, top of the skull region. So I think it'd be like the um, neutral region and um, places that um, bones like that. And that it was also able to be CT scanned uh, for better picture and manipulation of the specimen. So therefore, it was able to reach a sort of species level and you could kind of compare the specimen. So, so far, it seems like we only have one member of Laura Carnet identified in the fossil records. So Laura Carnet is the subfamily that contains uh, twig catfishes. So that's um, Farlawella. It also contains Stoosoma ichthys, uh, which would be the, what's it? Royal, they're all like stick, usually longer ones, um, longer species. Also Pseudohemiodon, which is your chameleons, AF, um, Apithanos, um, etc. But this was identified by the same people that I think I found the Acanthicus. Acanthicus is it in the subfamily Hypostomine, which is like hypans. Um, Hypans, barren cistrus and cistrus, that lot are in that subfamily. But so Bogan and Angelin, Angelin uh, was able to identify this um, Laurel Carnae fossil to the genus Sturosomichthys, which is the, as I mentioned, the same. Um, so this would be the royal twig, royal twig, royal stick, something like that. Um, Pleco is also in that family. Um, so you've got Stoosoma ichthys aureum, used to be Stoosoma aurea. And this specimen is from the late Miocene. Unlike the other two specimens, it's actually got a preserved body. Although from the pictures, it hasn't been, I, it hasn't been CT scanned. Whether the CT scan would bring up anything, um, but CT scanning is a really useful technology with fossils almost because it allows you to see inside, around, even with wet specimens, so what I handle. Um, you can sort of see the different bones without actually having to go in and extracting it. It Yeah, it is expensive. The technology might not be available to the scientists um, just in general. I don't know if you need different CT scanners for different objects because obviously you get CT scanners for medicine, whether that would be able to be used on, say, fossils. Um, but I know the geology ones, which is the fossil ones, can be used on wet specimens. So I guess, I don't know. But it's really interesting just to look at this body shape. Um, and it shows how difficult maybe these one like to find a complete specimen maybe, or even whether there's ones hidden um, in collections, totally unidentified, just waiting for someone to find it. Many of these fossils just hint to the past of Laurel Cardi and how they evolved such diversity. So it's really interesting to look at and fossil fishes are an entirely different field. Um, there's probably not as many people study, well, studying the low card fossils but maybe that's because they're so difficult to find um there's plenty of people looking into different uh fossil fishes placoderms which are the large marine um diverse group of fishes that went extinct uh, their phylogenetic placement gets debated all the time but it's really interesting just to compare um and that's the tax I need to talk about when I've done a lot more research because they are really interesting to compare to Laurel Cowers just in body shape. But anyway, thank you for watching and goodbye.